Hey friends, it's Jess with Virtually Visual and today I just wanted to record a really quick and really fun beginner friendly uh, soft body tutorial. You guys know I love my soft body shapes and I love spheres and probably have too many tutorials on this channel now with spheres. Um, so I might switch it up for this actual tutorial part, might try like stars for soft bodies. But um, you can see playing in the background is the test render that I did for this um, video beforehand. So this is the essential uh, simulation we're going to be recreating. It's super easy, really fun, and you can honestly uh, mix and uh, try some new things to make it your own. But yeah, really straightforward. Let's dive in. Okay, so in a new scene, you guys know the drill. I'm going to add a backdrop per usual. And I'm also going to add a figure just for scale reference. And I'm going to turn off our uh, work plane just so that's not there. So first thing I'm going to bring in a cloner and then I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. Let's bring some more in there now. Three, maybe scale this down a bit. Now let's add some objects in. So we've got kind of the base structure for our cloner. I think I'm not going to do spheres this time because honestly that effect, it's pretty all over the place. I'm going to try something else, but if all fails, I will go back to doing spheres. Uh, I'm doing this for the second time, so may mess things up. Okay. So I'm going to bring in a star and this is a spline, so it's not geometry yet. We can do six to th really throw things off here, guys. Um, okay. So six points. Uh, let's take both of these way down 15 and 25. I like it. All right. So once we got our star shape, we're then going to extrude it. Just grab an extrude. Um, let's bring this down maybe to 10. 10 is probably good. Let's hit N and B on our keyboard so we can see lines. And let's say we like that overall shape our base star this will be used for our cloner but before anything uh, we definitely need some more polygons in there just because for the simulation itself we're gonna want more points I might just throw this into a volume builder let's bring that down to one maybe let's try a smooth I don't want that super high though maybe like 20 let's throw that into a volume mesher and a remesher so builder goes into the mesher, volume mesher goes into remesh, and I want no adaptiveness in the remesher, and we can make this symmetric because it is. On our remesh, let's right click, go current state to object, and then we're not going to turn the remesh off, but we are going to hide it. Hold down alt, double click here, it will hide the whole remesh. And I'm going to create a new null and call this archive. This will be all the stuff we don't need seen. And I'm going to drag our old remesh in there and close it. So this will just be backup folder just in case. So our remesh is the star shape and that looks good. I'm going to drag that into our cloner and let's enable that again. Okay. Let's undo the rotation of our cloner. I think I just need to fix the, the count stuff here. Okay. 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 We just had to figure out that, that weirdness layer. Let's space these out a little bit more. And to make this even, let's try 50 and 50. Oh wait, it's 50 here, 50 and 50. Okay, and let's maybe do four going up and down. So let's save to be safe. And let's just get this first simulation to a spot we're happy with. So first things first, let's hit Control D or Command D, go to the simulation scene tab. Let's turn off gravity because we don't want these falling. And then we're going to throw a balloon tag on there. So right click on your cloner, go to simulation tags balloon. And by default, it's going to look like this. Okay. By default, I wasn't seeing anything. I had to change my overpressure to two. Let's try 1.5 just for the heck of it. So that's what we're getting by default. And if we kind of tilt to the side, you can see they're kind of puffy. Um, let's mess with some of the surface stuff. Let's change bendiness to 500, stretchiness to 50 maybe, thickness let's just take down to 1, and let's take target length up to maybe just 105, and maybe balloon we want to 2. Let's 
let's throw a little bit of randomness in there though. Uh, let's, what am I doing? Let's go to this plane drop down and let's do random. Click on your cloner and go to effectors and pull that in. And obviously things are gonna go all over the place. Let's just zero this all out for now. And we just wanna do some rotation for right now, I think. So maybe not this one. Which one do I want? Nope, it's this one. I think just to mix things up, let's have our stars rotated 360 degrees in random. Oh, and let's also make sure our cloner is set to random and not iterate, just to be safe. So cool, let's see what that's like now. Cool, I like that. I'm gonna just test this because I'm not sure if this would work. Um, the gist of getting soft body stuff to follow a spline or any kind of keyframe animation, I believe is going to the mix animation tab using one of these and then also hitting follow shape. So maybe theoretically we could have rotation affecting this too in our plane effector. Uh, let me just test that a second. So if on zero, let's do 360. Let's go to 30 and try 400. Just for the heck of it. I'll delete this if this doesn't work. Cool, yeah, so that works. So the gist of it really here, again, um, to get things to follow a certain kind of movement, you need to go to the mix animation tab, use either pins or force. I like pins, setting the influence pretty low and then having follow shape on. So I just keyframed the rotation. Um, I might actually take this frame to the end here to 90 and um, I might set that to a little bit higher. Maybe we want uh, 450. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just do that. Actually, let me drag this over here and let me let me highlight both keyframes. Right click and do linear. I don't want this to be eased. Um, okay, so let's just see what that's like. So yeah, it's affecting some of them, not all, obviously, because it's random. If you did um, plane effector, it would probably affect them all. And you could use some fields and whatnot. That'd be cool. But that's essentially the cloner part. Um, let's figure out now the part that we want to have going through these. So um, I might actually make a copy of our star, or you could make a totally new star. That's also definitely an option. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Let's bring that up here for now. Bring it down. I'm gonna hide my backdrop from the viewport. Um, okay, let's get this kind of into position below our other cloner. Just gonna go like that for right now. Okay, so to make this easy, I did not keyframe a path or draw a spline. I actually just went to the spline area and I did a helix and I set that to XZ. And it's pretty big by default, so I'm just gonna scale this down. I'm actually also gonna move it so the bottom is kind of where my star is and change the height to a little bit higher. Uh, we want our end radius to be smaller, maybe something like that. And you can play around with the biases now as well. Um, so I think that looks kind of good. Let me rotate here and see. We might need bigger angles. I kind of like that. I might move it down a little bit. Might change the bias. Okay, so say I like that. How do we get the star to then follow that uh, path? So first of all, I want to. I'm gonna increase the size of our moving star gonna rename that. I also want to drag our balloon tag also onto this star shape and we'll just leave the settings for now. But the next thing we want to do is right click, go to animation tags, and you want to do align to spline. And this is just where we're gonna drag our helix. And nothing will happen by default. Um, if you hit play, it's not gonna go anywhere. 
So the thing you have to do is uh, you have to animate the position. So I'm going to hit a keyframe for a position at 0% on frame 0. And then I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to go all the way to 100%. Pretty self-explanatory. But let me highlight both of these frames and make sure it is linear movement first. So now we should be good. Let's take a peek. So you may have noticed that the animation works, but it's a little bit finicky. It's not really moving between the stars and it's kind of just like hitting the surface. Um, a, one way you can fix that is change the influence uh, of the mix animation stuff to maybe something higher. Maybe we want like 15 um, and we can just try that first. Okay, so I think it's moving a little bit too fast. So let me also take down maybe the bendiness of this one. Maybe we'll do 320 and 100 is fine for the length. Let's do 20 here. And honestly, part of it could also be it's moving too fast for 90 frames. Let me take this to 300 and let me set our keyframes. Maybe we'll move the one at 90 to 150. And let me see, did we have any other keyframes? Random. Yes. All right. So let's move both of our keyframes to 150. Let's try that again. Okay, so things are working. Maybe our moving star is a little bit too large. So I'm gonna scale that a little bit down. Um, okay, let's just save. Maybe this is a good time for us to hit Command D, go to our simulation settings, and we could take our collision passes up. I'm gonna try taking it up by two, and maybe our damping we want up to five. So let's see what that does now. Okay, so we're still getting some artifacts on our previous stars. So maybe we have too much bendiness and stretchiness here too. Let's take that down 300 maybe and 10. Let's change our main star to 310 as well. And let me try taking friction off completely for both of these. I think things look good. Um, again, the reason why the stars kind of go back to their original resting position is because of that mix animation pin tab. Um, and it also enables our stars to follow um, rotation from the random field, but then also our star to follow the spline. In my test render, you may have noticed I had some rigid bodies inside of my original sphere. I will also show you how you can do that uh, with stars. So I'm gonna create a new uh, just material not standard and I'm going to set this to glass just so we can kind of see in our star and we'll create another material for our cloner stars and I'm going to hit NA on our keyboard again and I will re-enable our backdrop. I'm going to take this up, bring it down. Okay, just so that's there and I'm going to delete our figure while we're here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, we'll just do spheres inside the star to make things easy. I'm gonna bring that down, let's just do two for the centimeter value or radius. I'm gonna bring that kind of to where I know we're in our star shape. Hopefully this is good. And I'm gonna clone this a few times by just holding control and dragging. You could also do a cloner. I'm just doing this for the sake of time. Okay, let's say we want that many. Let's just group these. Okay, and also highlight all the spheres. Let's set the segments down to like 12. We don't need so many since they're so small. Let's also right click, go to render tags, redshift object, turn on geometry and tessellation. And then let's also right click, go to simulation tags, and we're gonna do rigid body. So let's see what this is like at first. Let's also, let's leave things by default. Let's just see how it behaves. Yeah, so that worked out. So I was a little bit worried that the collision um, 
radiuses for the little rigid bodies would be bad. I thought that we might need to add a little bit there, but I think we're all right. Um, I do still see some artifacts with our last star there that could have been introduced with the rigid sims. So maybe I'll up our collision passes and maybe take our sub steps to 30. And I'm gonna try um, caching these. So I'm gonna highlight our rigid body tags. I'm gonna also command click on our balloon tags. I'm gonna hit cache and cache objects. Cool, so I think that solved our little issue there. Let's see. Yep, so obviously this is cached, so it's playing much faster. And honestly, the simulation itself might be too fast. Um, I might extend this to full 300 as far as where my keyframes are, but that's really the gist of it. Um, I'll maybe render out here just a frame from it and I'll show you my material breakdown. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of the tutorial, really. Um, feel free to keep watching if you want to just see how I played with the different materials. Um, and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Hopefully you guys had fun watching and I hope you have fun trying it out. But yeah, thanks so much, guys. I will see you in the next tutorial and stay tuned for more. See ya.